and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here is your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'll start by asking, what's new to you, Alex? Well, normally we would record on a weekend. Normally we would have recorded last weekend. (laughs) And we kind of are recording on a weekend, and I just realized it's the the week. Anyway. It is Friday. (laughs) the, The major reason we're late to recording is because I went on a book tour. Gosh, how was it? Was it so much fun? So it was mostly so much fun. Um, <laughs> I thought it was going to be um, way more nerve wracking than it was. It really was not that bad, which says a lot. And I think that's like saying a lot about what I've sort of learned about my own limits and all that. Um, but basically, I did one small little reading in Seattle that went well, but it wasn't super great. Um, uh, and my books are now on sale at Open Books, a poetry emporium in Seattle, the world's only poetry only bookstore. It's either world's only or United States only. I think it might be world's only though. Yeah. So that's cool. It is so cool. Saturday I had the free day and I watched our topic for today. Yes, we'll come back around to that one. <laughs> and then Sunday I went up to Bellingham. And it was just it was just so wonderful. I missed Bellingham so much. I got Aww. I got my books in Village Books. Oh man, that's so crazy. There. That's so and crazy. Then, I know, right? <laughs> it was so easy. It was so easy. Really? Yeah. yeah, they're like I was like, so how do I go about getting my books here? And they're like, Oh, we do consignment, so Give us like five or ten bucks, uh, five of your books, and we'll see how it goes. That's so cool. They're, they're yeah. so rad. Yeah, I love that store. It was it was very easy. And then the, that night, I did a reading at, uh, with all the local poets um, at their sort of monthly open mic, and it was just like the most wonderful, heartwarming thing ever. Hmm. So That's so cool. It was just awesome. And I'm, and for like a little bit of it, I was toying with, oh, what if I moved back up there? Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I bet it is so damn cold up there right now. Okay. So it had stopped <laughs> snowing when I was up there, but there was still snow on the ground. Oh, uh, no. It was like 35 degrees and Bellingham winds. So that's all you really need to say. Uh, I can't. I, that was, was the worst part of living in Bellingham for me was, was the cold. I just, I don't do well in the snow. And I lived on a hill. Yeah. Uh, like over by South Campus. Mm-hmm. And it, oh, it was like when it was icy out, when it was snowy out, I couldn't like I couldn't drive away from my apartment because oh, yeah. on that hill it was just sledding. <laughs> there was no <laughs> there was no driving anywhere during that because I li- I lived like in the middle of the hill, so yeah. I couldn't go one direction or the other. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad. Yeah, but the, it is a beautiful, beautiful town. And in the summer, it's just like the it's paradise in the summer. Yeah, well, I, I've been but, there so but, little in the summer. Yeah, well, because <laughs> as a student, <laughs> uh huh, the best but, time of year, and so, I'm not there. The best thing to do here's a hot tip: if you go to Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington, skip winter quarter and do summer quarter instead. <laughs> Just work around that because you yeah. will be a happier person. Oh my god, like 8 a.m. classes during winter quarter was the worst thing that ever happened to me. Like, okay. <laughs> walking for, for, to school in the dark. Well, and for listeners, even if you get to campus, it's all brick, which is always wet. So it's an ice oh, It's so it's slippery. Cold. It's... And, it, and, you know, when it snows, like, that, there's so much foot traffic that it gets stamped down into yeah. just, like, it's a hard ice. It's hard ice. It's so bad. I never personally fell down, but a certain boy that I am engaged to fell down several <laughs> times. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, my my parents actually bought me a pair of those like yak track like oh, foot, nice. uh, <laughs> yeah, things. So that, uh, I he actually needed them more than I did, but <laughs> <laughs> he's a faster walker than me. I think that's that's the issue. I was I was down to take it cautiously, but he was just like trucking and <laughs> didn't work out. You gotta you gotta walk slowly. You gotta drive slowly. <laughs> Well, gosh, and and you uh you ate at some lovely restaurants that I missed oh, dearly. My there were so many that I skipped too. I wish like I could just boomers. Skip. Like okay, <sighs> boomers. In my defense, though, like I ate breakfast and then I left before lunch. So uh, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not go to boomers? And I almost, I almost got QQ Lee's. On the way out. Ah, uh, QQ Lee's. Man, For five bucks, memories. like, it's so tempting. I ate that, like, five times a week. <laughs> it was so, it's so good. Yeah, the, the the places that I used to go to mostly were Boomers and On Rice. Mm-hmm, yeah. The, the Thai place right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, their peanut sauce I, is the best peanut sauce. I think sauce. I only went to On Rice once, and I went to the one in Fairhaven. Yeah. And I yeah. that was the first time I had like had legitimate Thai food. And so I was so <laughs> yeah. overwhelmed. I got something really weird. <laughs> oh no. See, we used to get every single time um the rama, which is your meat, which for me was tofu over a bed of fresh spinach with peanut sauce on top. And so like mm-hmm. the tofu and the peanut sauce start to sort of wilt the spinach underneath and it's oh. perfect. It's perfect. I did eat at a fancy Japanese restaurant while I was in Seattle. And I tried Ooh, some how things. was it? It was good. I had, um, I don't know any of the names, but it's, it's, it was, mostly they had ramens. Um, but, mm. um, I had the one where you have like a hot, sweet broth and then you have the cold noodles and you dip them. Ooh. Yeah. yeah I don't know what that's that called. Kind of, I, I don't, I'm so bad with all the names, but I had seen that on, on like a YouTube video and I was like, oh, I'm going to try that. Uh, and that was fun. But the nice. thing I tried that I, that I was brave enough to try was the cow tongue. Oof. Which, I mean, is it good? gross? It's not gross. It's just kind of like, um, it tastes like, I don't know, like a beef with a sauce on it with a sure. different texture. Yeah, no. Like, uh, and you know, that's, that's in a lot of different, like Mexican cooking and stuff uses tongue a lot. Um, Will loves like cheek and tongue and stuff. I n- never had that, but I stopped eating meat at age 10. So, you know, there are a <laughs> lot of things I've never tried. <laughs> what have you been up to? Well, I've just been really sick, but... <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I did start watching uh, Mind Hunters. Ooh. And I'm really liking it. I've watched, I think, four episodes so far, and I'm really, really liking it. Is it what you expected? Um, I mean, sort of. Like, just think, knowing the premise and knowing David Fincher as a director, mm-hmm. it's mostly, yeah, what I had expected. Um, I guess I didn't realize it was so much about, like, the story of this man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sort of his life and his career. Um, Because, you know, the way people describe it, it's like, oh, it's about how they're pioneering this, like, uh, you know, psychology of sociopaths and psychopaths and stuff. And, um... But really, it's just about Jonathan Groff. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's um, what some people have disliked about it that I've talked to. Or oh, I don't dislike from. that at all. See, I, I, I think it, um, it had it made me have to sort of reevaluate my opinion on it going through it because mm-hmm. I did I kind of did want more of the like interviews. Yeah. What well, man? The Ed Kemper stuff is so good. He, oh my goodness. Oh, that, that guy, guy is he, so he needs, good. He needs an Emmy. He needs He's an Emmy. crazy good, and he looks a lot like the real life Ed Kemper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, like Ed Kemper, at least in the photos that I've seen, isn't quite as heavy as that guy. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, it's just to a T, man. Wow. He's so good. And it's. The, I think the, the most unsettling thing of the whole... Well, I mean, it's all pretty unsettling. But for me, like, <laughs> they're, they're trying to pinpoint this one thing that matches all of them or connects all of the different killers. 
Uh huh. Um, but then the second person, they, the second and third person they interview, they're nothing like Ed. Nothing like. Yeah, him. The, he's. I mean, yeah, he's just such a unique fellow that. Right. <laughs> like no one's like Ed Kemper. <laughs> well, and I guess maybe, maybe that's almost where a little bit of Hannibal comes from. You know. Yeah. Yeah, he's very articulate and and conscious of like his own psychosis. Like yeah. he knows what's going on with him and he knows what's wrong with him. He just is like that's just the way that it is. That's how I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good and I I can't wait to watch more of it. But uh also, I got a fun surprise today. Ooh. Um <laughs> Yeah, so I got home. I like rushed. I was in such a hurry today, um, leaving work because I had to stop at the post office on my way home before, mm-hmm. uh, you know, before I I got home. And you know, they I get off work at four thirty and they close at five. Oh. <laughs> and so yeah, I was like, I was just in this mad rush. Um, and then I get home and I'm sort of like dealing with myself, trying to get set up. And then Dylan, my brother, gets home and is like, I got this package. I don't even remember what it is. And he opened it up and he's like, All right, I bought you a present. What? I was like, What? <laughs> you bought me a present? He's the best brother ever. He opened it up. He bought me a, an official Capcom Monster Hunter Poogie plushie. <laughs> Poogie's my favorite video game character in the entire <laughs> world. Do you know Monster Hunter very well? I, I know the premise and I've seen, I, I know what it is, but I've never, I don't know the characters or anything. Well, Poogie is just a pig. <laughs> <laughs> he's just your little pig. He's your pet and he's a little pig and you can dress him up in costumes. <laughs> and he's my favorite thing. Not many people know this about me, but I love piggies. I love them. <laughs> And Pookie's the best piggy ever, and it's him, and he's wearing this little striped outfit with his little bow on his tail, and he's the best Pookie ever, and I'm so happy, and I'm holding him right now. <laughs> Are you excited for Monster Hunter World? You know, I don't actually play Monster Hunter myself, <laughs> I just really love Pookie. <laughs> you know what, that's I mean, it looks great. like, you, you're... Yes! <laughs> No, it's just, I've just seen, you know, Dylan and Will play it a lot, and I just really am fond of Pookie. Uh, <laughs> and, so, yeah, so, yes, I'm excited for, like, I, I think that Monster Hunter World looks really rad, but I probably am not going to play it myself. <laughs> I've, I've never played any of the Monster Hunters, and they're probably mostly outside of my skill levels as a gamer. Oh, they uh, seem so hard. But from what I heard, Monster Hunter is going to be a lot more accessible. Or, um, World Monster Hunter World? Gonna, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, since they're bringing it to, like, a a main console, yeah. I have to imagine they're trying to give it a little bit broader appeal. So they'll actually, like, uh, it's... sell some? <laughs> yeah, that would be great if they would sell in America. <laughs> but I love Pookie. His, he's got so many costumes. My favorite one of his, though, is <laughs> it's basically just a diaper. <laughs> and he, I think he has like a little curl of hair on his head, mm-hmm. and it's called the Naked Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best name for anything, and he's just in a little diaper. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really happy right now because I've got my little best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, golly, I think we've been gabbing long enough. Let's talk about something else fun. Sure. <laughs> yes. So we're talking about Thor Ragnarok! <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> wow! Yeah, no, that that's part of what I want to talk about is that song. But, <laughs> so, yes, we both saw Thor Ragnarok last weekend. Boy, howdy, is it really very good. It's really very good. It's It's very good. um i kind of want to start off with the trailer sure yeah um, because dang it was accurate like it really was representative of the movie for once it was and i would i would go as far to say it's been it's probably my favorite movie trailer i've ever seen it's up there as far as really good really effective trailers (laughs) um (laughs) well yes we and we did talk about that back at the time how you said that yeah you would gladly let Kate Blanchett murder you. And I, I think that's still true. Um, <laughs> I'm just really, spoiler, I'm really upset nobody else let her murder them. 
I mean, yeah, she didn't do a great deal of mu- she, she, really anything. She murdered the the sort of like. You know what? Friend, she murdered like of, all the friends. Yeah, the friends, the, super the friends, friends of Thor. The, yeah, the yeah his his motley crew of multicultural Vikings. Yes. <laughs> all of them. And that would have been sad if they like, like, actually put up a fight. If they mattered. <laughs> yeah, or if you know, cause, like we got so. I mean, they were in uh, the, dark world. the first Thor movie, they really, and they were in the Dark yeah. World a little. I. Um, oh, also, the one of them was really featured in a in a storyline on uh, Agents of Shield. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Which one? Uh, the tall lady, the white lady, the lady Sif. Yes, Sif. Yeah. Yes. So she didn't die, right? She lived. Sif lived. I don't think she was in this. She was. She was. Unless you're thinking of someone else. So Sif was the is the girl. She looks a lot like Xena. Yes. Um, she was in Thor, yeah. and she, yeah, and so she, and she was in, um, The Dark World. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure she, I know she was in it, I think she lived. Okay. But the boys all died. Oh, yeah, for sure. Hela killed all three of those boys. Yeah, Hela killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she just killed just a lot of Asgardians, just sort of, like, at one time. But <laughs> it, it is interesting to me how it, it like separate from like there were two like separate plots happening and it worked it worked but it made me sad because that's probably they probably had to do it that way because of Kate Blanchett's schedule maybe so I think they did it that way because they wanted to make Planet Hulk oh that's true (laughs) you're right I mean (laughs) like they were making Planet Hulk and like sort of um Unworthy Thor, a little bit. Yeah. Like, it's weird how they were like, let's make Planet Hulk, but let's make Thor the protagonist of it. <laughs> uh, so, I recently did read Planet Hulk, and I do want to talk about that when we get around to it. Yeah. But it, yeah, I was surprised how, like, little it bothered me that, like, the villain and the protagonist had very little to do with each other for the majority of the runtime. Yeah, and... She got to do a, a couple cute little speeches, but I don't know. I just wanted her to, like, I don't know, destroy Earth or something really cool. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, she just sort of paraded around looking like the cover of a metal album. <laughs> and that that worked for I love me. It. Like, I love it when she would, like, take off her helmet and then, like, 30 seconds later she'll put her helmet back on. She's like... It's just like exasperatedly like fine <laughs> helmet time again. I just want to put my hair down. Right. God. And I, why is everyone bothering me? I honestly me? liked her makeup better at the beginning when she's all like drained of power, versus when she's all. Oh like, yeah, when she's looking charged. all like messed up. Yeah. Yeah. She looked really rad, all just like gnarly. Her suit's kind of like torn yeah. up. And it's like ooh yeah. <laughs> Although it's a good look um, on back you. Back to the trailer. So the one thing that I thought was really odd yeah. was in the trailer when she destroys Molnir, they're in a city. Mm-hmm. And then somehow they just. Oh yeah, they weren't on that cliff. They were in Asgard when it she was did that Asgard in the trailer. Or New York. It looked like a New York alley. Really? Uh, did it? I don't know. I watched wow, it a lot. Because yeah, she defo <laughs> don't go to Earth. <laughs> Oh, well, you, you've definitely watched it more um, than me, so you would know and better. I think maybe, I wonder, that's I wonder fun, if yeah. they had a plan where, like, she would get set free when they're with... And, like, rampage the universe yeah. well, for a like, bit. There like she wanted to do. There was around with Loki and Doctor Strange. <laughs> oh, my God. I loved that whole Doctor Strange interlude. That was really good. Like, I... I definitely have some quibbles with the Doctor Strange film, but that scene, that whole bit was okay, so good. so Th- Thor is not Thor in this movie. <laughs> no, he's Star-Lord in this movie. <laughs> Thor turned in, everyone is Star-Lord now, and every movie is Guardians of the Galaxy now, and that's okay with me. <laughs> yes, yes. Because he's so clumsy <laughs> and, like, just smashing things. Ugh. Well, and he's just so quippy. He's never been quippy well, before. Well, I mean, look at all of his new friends that are quippy. He has to keep up, so... Yeah, I, I, he has... Yeah, he's... he's The the Avengers are yeah. rubbing off on him. He's spending too much time Which with Tony totally Stark. totally makes sense. <laughs> and it's not, like, out of nowhere and doesn't feel, like, weird or wrong. Yeah, he's just growing as a character and changing as a person. But he's turning into Star-Lord, yeah. is what he's... 
like like that whole opening bit right? with the big guy and he's, he's and he's just like wait a sec it's just spinning on that chain like that that was shockingly funny like I, watching this movie i was just like how are they gonna keep up this level of comedy and they did like they absolutely did and and never got this, tiresome this is the first time in recent memory that like physical comedy in like this kind of movie has worked like he just falls a lot well, and it's hilarious and 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 loki as a character is now just a punching bag like he got beat up in the avengers and we all loved it and so now he just gets beaten all the time but like that's what we do my, to loki is we just smash he's him so good in this though like he really is Tom Hiddleston is so funny. Right? He is so funny. I couldn't... Be- I Like, my favorite line ever was, I was falling for 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I just... I couldn't deal with it. And he's so... F- and that bit... Oh, man, no, what? Okay. Actually, my favorite line is when they're like, uh, Thor and Bruce and Valkyrie are like, having their little huddle about whether or not they're going to trust Loki. And Thor tells that story about when Loki's like, Loki turned himself into a snake because he knows I love snakes. And then when I picked him up, he turned back into himself. And he's like, yeah, it's me. And he stabbed me. (laughs) (laughs) That line destroyed me. Like, the way he just delivered it. And he's like, yeah, it's me. And he stabbed me. (laughs) Okay. But I just just, just realized we have to talk about the, the play within the play. It was Matt Damon. I know. It was Matt Damon. That's the funniest also, thing I've ever seen. Thor. Thor was another. Um, uh, what are they called? His one of his was a Hemsworth. Was it Liam? No, it was a, it was a third one. No, it was a third Hemsworth. I don't know the third Hemsworth. I don't either, I'm not but familiar that's what with I heard. them, so I'm gonna a, have to. T- I heard it's another Hemsworth. He's a Hemsworth. Yeah, he's a lesser Hemsworth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't recognize him, but the fact that Matt Damon played Loki, like, I lost well, and, like, my mind. Well, and, like, disappeared into the role as well. <laughs> he, it was so... Uh, and and then it, what got me, too, was freaking uh, Anthony Hopkins that as was... Loki as Odin. Okay, Academy Awards... <laughs> Uh, calling. We have an award for you. Oh my god. That was so funny. When he sees Thor and he's like, oh shit. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Loki is the funniest character in this movie. I can't believe it. He's, like, there were inklings of this sort of funny rapport beginning in the dark world like that's really the best part of that movie yeah. is their report like the plot itself is pretty dull and yeah. un- uninspiring but like their chemistry is really beginning to be a thing in that movie and it's the saving grace of that movie i actually hadn't seen it until um like the day before i went to go see ragnarok (laughs) Uh because i was like i need to watch this like for some kind of context literally the only context was oh loki's pretending to be dead again but he's odin like okay that's that's the only thing i needed to take away (laughs) from that movie yeah but (laughs) loki's always pretending to be dead um that's how loki did and honestly i don't think thor the dark world is a terrible movie no, but it's definitely... It's definitely on the not, bottom of the Marvel movie lists. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty low on them. But I've become a lot more sort of critical of them, uh, you know, in retrospect recently. Like, well, especially thinking because about they, them, expect, they expect us to buy a movie ticket for every single one. Like, we, we need to be and more I critical. Will. I know, I know, but like... I don't know. We, we, we can't just, we can't just got eat them all up, you know? Like, I, I, I know well, a lot yeah. of people that never saw the new Spider-Man. Oh, I liked that I one did too. a lot, I though. liked it a lot. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I wasn't that into um, Age of Ultron. I just didn't think it was very good. It was, it was as, much it was worse the than the, the Avengers. First, first Avengers for me. It was, like... I thought it I thought it was much worse. It, I really I liked it. Was worse the Avengers it was is, like... A copy of it. Ah, yeah, there was a again, lot of Civil War was amazing. I have mixed feelings on Civil War. I do, but uh, yeah, like I know, and I know that that's that's a less popular opinion. Like I, <laughs> I might be an outlier in <laughs> in having quibbles with that one. But 
uh, yeah, I was recently thinking about, like, what are my, like, top Marvel movies at this point? And in uh-huh. no particular order, because I'm still struggling with it, uh, The Avengers, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, and now Thor Ragnarok. It's that good. <laughs> it's that good that it immediately has shot to the top of the list. It's it's better than all of them in every category. <laughs> like poster wins the wins. Yeah. Like, me, me, well, the music is actually I would say underplayed in this, despite with, it's, with the exception of the. You theme. know, I actually the whole movie was like really digging the score, the soundtrack, with just that cool like sort of synthy eighties stuff. I it was really good. dig that. I liked it, but I thought I it, it sounded to me to my ear that it was turned down like a notch or two too low. Oh, so it, it was, was just too like, a like peripheral. Rather yeah. Than score. Yeah, I was I was really digging, but like I'm really really into like classic synth music, so like it was just a I dream come I, true for I me. Think I, I think I need to go through go to like Spotify and listen to the score. Because... I want to do that. <laughs> I would do that for fun. It's and I think I think I'm also having a I'm being critical of it because um, a couple weeks ago I saw. Um, Blade Runner and that score was oh, just like yeah. mind blowing. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> Blade Runner, so yeah. what are you gonna do? <laughs> but yeah, I, I just I was really digging the '80s vibes in this movie. Like they really hit it pitch perfect. I gotta say, like I was getting major heavy metal vibes. Have you seen? Are you familiar with heavy metal? Not very much, but I I know I know what you're talking the, about. The yeah. the animated anthology film ba- that was sort of a spin off of the long running uh, sci fi fantasy anthology magazine, Heavy Metal. Like it was, boy, lots of heavy metal vibes. Just all of this, like I mean, especially with that, with the um, oh gosh, what's the song? Uh uh. Immigrant song, Led Zeppelin immigrant song that yeah. <laughs> that plays a couple times. Like, uh, but but even when it wasn't, you know, playing, uh, just like a lot of the imagery was just very like just ripped right out of that that vibe, that whole thing with Valkyrie, like with the big like turret machine gun <laughs> and like um, what's his I, villain? For a second, I thought she was gonna instead of doing the little turret, I thought she was gonna put it on her shoulder, like. You just good, 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 good. yeah. <laughs> like Gamora and Guardians too. And what's that doofus's name? The, um, when he's like jumping out of the ship with his two machine guns, like oh, Carl gah, 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 gah. yeah, he man, that like that was hardcore heavy metal vibes. So like I was really, really enjoying all, of, and even the stuff like on Sakar was very much that because there's a lot I, of sci-fi and heavy metal. Sakar well. was was beautiful. I love Sakaar. Here's okay, so let's transition into talking about Planet Hulk because um okay. so all of that stuff was loosely and I emphasize the word loosely based upon the comic arc Planet Hulk. Um, written by Greg Pack, who's just the best. Um <laughs> and <laughs> So Planet Hulk, the comic, is actually about, okay, uh, Hulk is launched into space by his friends uh, because they're like, we can't, you're too hulky. You can't stay on Earth anymore. We just, we found a solution. We're shipping you off to this great planet Which we found. happens in, in the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe just in more of an accidental version. Of yeah, it's an accident. <laughs> he just accidentally goes to space and gets picked up by the portal thingy um in in planet hulk they ship him off on purpose um they they're like we found a, a freaking reed richards i hate reed richards um he's like ah oh, we found this great planet uh it's like lovely and green and lush and there's no higher life forms on it just game so you can just run about have a great time hulk it up <laughs> do whatever you want this is your planet by forever uh <laughs> but there's this this wormhole that seems to sort of discriminately pick people up from space and send them to sakar it, it seems that this thing actually like chooses yeah. mm-hmm. um it's not not ever made clear how it works but it definitely seems to be deliberate um well i would venture a guess that it has to do with the grandmaster well that's character's not in the comic okay, uh so, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna very 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 brief summary of uh 
of Planet Hulk. Hulk gets dropped on Sakaar. It's it, rather than being like a cool like techno neon garbage planet, it, uh, <laughs> Sakaar is more of an ancient Rome desert planet. Um, yeah. Very like ancient gladiatorial thing going on, and there's this. Um, red emperor who rules the planet and he's of this colonizing race of imperials um that have sort of taken over in a fascist way he's like sort of a dictator on this planet and people aren't great people aren't happy um under his rule he's a bad bad emperor and hulk shows up and is the strongest ever he's the strongest one there is and uh he ends up being very successful as a gladiator and some like rebels decide that they need his help launching like a a coup and he's not interested because he's hulk but he ends (laughs) up sort of inadvertently becoming this like folk hero uh-huh. um he, like and like he just sort of by hulking around he like <laughs> ends up sort of saving these people yeah. um it, he's a lot more um articulate it's yeah. interesting at this point in the comics hulk is like just sort of a normal brained person like he's ragey and mean but he can speak in full sentences and stuff <laughs> but he ends up sort of making some friends including meek and korg who i'm going to talk about in a minute <laughs> uh, boy am i going to talk about them uh and like yeah saving this planet and he ends up being made the new king And he has this wife and they end up like she gets pregnant and it's like, oh, man, everything's great. Hulk saved everyone. He this is the place for him. Like it's about Hulk sort of finding a place where he is appreciated. Uh Um, And he becomes king of Sakaar and everything's great. And then the shuttle that he was in blows up big time, destroys the whole planet. (laughs) And Hulk is devastated yeah it's really really bad uh that's the end of the comic (laughs) everything blows up everything he ever loved everything he worked for is gone he's the only one left because he's the hulk and even a planet blowing up can't kill him um so it's a really different story basically the only similarity is there's a planet called sakar they do gladiatorial fighting there and hulk is present and there's a little (laughs) bit of the rebellion thing but it's more of for humor's sake than for actual plot (laughs) yeah yeah in the it's like a serious like like a serious civil war going on like an uprising in planet hulk um so Korg. <laughs> now, I really, really liked him in this movie. Because um, he, he was voiced by the director, yep. which is great. He was very, very funny. He was very funny. <laughs> uh, he That's not... I mean, the only thing... that He's like, he's a rock monster named Korg. <laughs> but in the comic, he's actually... He's a very serious person and um, very religious. He's a very religious person. <laughs> that's sort of his defining trait. And Meek is nothing like he is in the comic. <laughs> Aside from being a bug named Meek, that is about it. Because um, I thought it was really weird in the movie. He's like this little larva in like an exosuit. <laughs> in the comic, he's just like a bug person, like with limbs. He's actually got like six limbs and he's like a bug boy. And he's actually Hulk's best friend. Aww. He's his best friend. Like, he's this little scrappy guy. And he's he talks, and he's really funny and cute. Um, and he, he has this huge arc where he ends up, like, he's, like, doesn't have a hive because they were all killed when he was first hatched. And then he, like, finds that some of his hive is still around and becomes their king. And, like, he, like, has a metamorphosis and turns into, like, a big king bug. It's really great. <laughs> like, it's a great story. And in the in the movie, he's reduced to, like, this is Mike. He's got sword hands. Like, that's it. That's all there is to him. Like, he's got sword hands. It's like, sword hands? He doesn't even have sword hands. What are, where did these sword hands come from? What is it? And I liked them. I really liked Meek and Korg in this. I thought they were very funny, but they barely resemble their counterparts. They in the need comic. their own Amazon original series. <laughs> Meek and Korg. Well, I'm sure they're going to play a role in whatever is coming next. I honestly I'm Thor. terrified of what monstrosity Infinity War has become. <laughs> this Infinity War is going to be well cuz they they play a pretty big role especially Meek in the following story arc um after 
uh, Planet Hulk, World War Hulk, where Hulk brings all his little friends that survived, like him and his like buddies from the gladiatorial days, mm -hmm. like they survive and they get on a ship and they're headed for Earth because th he's going to get his revenge. <laughs> like he's like, this is, I hate all humans now. Th everyone on Earth is going to pay because of what they did to me. Um, and it's this whole big thing. Uh, so I think probably Dylan actually posited this theory to me that because Korg and Meek are so um, prominently featured at the very end when they're like right there on the bridge of the ship next to Thor, mm -hmm. um, probably they're going to feature in the Infinity War somehow. Meek is going to have his big metamorphosis and turn into a big king bug and like uh -huh. blow everyone away because he's just a little larva right now, but he's going to like turn into a big bug boy and like kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Interestingly, though, because, um, you know, Planet Hulk is very much about, like, colonialism and, like, n oppressed native peoples, because uh -huh. um, Meek's race of insects are the natives of Sakaar, uh -huh. um, and and they've been, like, colonized by these red dudes, <laughs> Um and, and I think that, I think that Thor Ragnarok is also a colonialism story. Um, oh, but it's more on the maybe less. It's more on the part of the um, the what are they called? Thor's people, as guardians. As guardians. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, yeah. Hela's like, let's go and be the colonialists that we always yeah. have been. Like, let's do it. Let's go colonize the whole universe by force, and like they're sort of sweeping their like history of colonialism under the rug. Yeah. Like yep. Odin was embarrassed he was ashamed of it and he's like we don't do that anymore and hell is like uh that's all we do yeah. colonialism all day every day so <laughs> so it, it, it is and then at the end the asgardians are sort of like a you know a people without a home yeah. i like they're definite parallels to like the nation of israel and like the the like History of the Hebrew, you know, yeah. like the Hebrew sort of wandering people thing, well, also, and that was very interesting. In, in, a, in maybe more less, uh, you know, um, pessimistic uh, sort of idea. <laughs> it, it also makes me think of like the Vikings because they were so tied to their ships. Yeah, well, they definitely colonized, but in. Um, different ways yeah, I mean, than like, at the end of the movie, they're we like, tend to think of. It's just a people living on a ship, you know? Yeah. Um, but it, it also makes me think of, oh, I was going to say it, but I totally forgot. Um, oh, it totally reminded me of Titan AE. Oh, I hadn't even the, I hadn't occurred just, just to like me. The, the whole like colony ship kind of idea. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can see that. I can see some similarities there. One thing I will point out that did kind of bother me um, was how white the Asgardians were. Yeah, at least at least Heimdall was like hero front and center. Yeah, and there were a couple. Like I was really glad that Heimdall got his yeah, time in the sun. Um, and there were a couple um, extras, but it was like lots and uh, yeah and so that it, that's part of what makes the sort of colonial yeah. story yeah. maybe less effective than the one in planet hulk because planet hulk is just like multicultural like aliens of color you know <laughs> <laughs> like they're various species and the, you know the the most of the heroes are not the imperial race yeah. of well and you like know, the, the imperial obviously race of the asgardians are supposed to be the vikings yeah they're coded yes. very northern Which, european I mean, if you're if you're going with that sure it makes sense that most of them are white but i mean also i don't know movie. like these movie. are like crazy space True, aliens exactly. and it's also a movie in 2017 it's <laughs> like come on work a little harder yeah, no, there's no real reason other than just that visual coding, Which, but, like, we can honestly, deal with that. Like, <laughs> Honestly, as as far as my own education, I accepted in Thor, the first one. And yeah, and that passed me, it makes sense. But now I'm like, again, try a little harder. Yeah, I mean, like, 
this is a thing that happens in a lot of fantasy where they're like, well, it would just be right. unrealistic to have non-white people. And it's like, there's a lot more in this that's unrealistic. <laughs> I think we can accept some brown people. Like, it's not that it's not that wild. And I mean, we do have a woman be... of color as a lead. We, yeah, and she kicked oh. all the asses. And she was a Valkyrie. Like, yep. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and Heimdall was just kicking ass up and down. <laughs> oh, boy. Idris Elba. Idris Elba. Mm. That, was another, too good. that was another subplot going on. Yeah, well, they had to have a, like, proxy hero yeah. in Asgard since Thor was busy planet hulking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> it, yeah, it was very weird to me um, seeing Planet Hulk play out with Thor as the hero of it. Oh, and we we'll say though, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I was just about to say, <laughs> oh, Jesus, he stole every scene. He stole scenes he wasn't in. <laughs> he was so good. Oh, my God. Oh. Jeff Goldblum is the funniest man on the planet. Just like... <sighs> He's also, a much he's a, more... his little assistant lady, I mean, she wasn't little, <laughs> yeah. but no. she was phenomenal. His, like, bodyguard person. Yeah, she oh, was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... Liquefying the one guy. <laughs> yeah, why are you giving me this the liquefying stick? I don't want, I don't need that. He, it's a minor offense. <laughs> yeah, he was, you can go back to ass place Asperg. <laughs> Asperg. His delivery is too good all the time. I don't... I, I, I don't I don't understand how either. I mean, it's so good. I just don't understand Jeff Goldblum, how he can be real. I don't know. He's well, too like, funny. So he's supposed to be the same sort of creature as uh, Star-Lord's Star dad, right? I honestly have no idea. I think Where did you get the idea that? I think he's is, a celestial. Is he? Yeah, if is I he? remember correctly. Oh, yeah, I didn't pick up on that, Here, possibly. I'm going to click on his link. Um, oh, he's uh, one of the ageless elders of the universe, so I don't know what that means. He's just some big, important fella. His brother is the collector. Oh! Oh! Yeah, what? Yeah. Jeff Goldblum is the collector's brother? Yeah. What? What? Yeah, there's some interesting things, yeah. Whoa, that's fascinating information that kind of puts the whole thing in a new light. Well, and they have similar huh. makeup. <laughs> Apparently it's not makeup. Well, uh, either yeah, that or these brothers go. got similar fashion sense. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's yeah. funny. And huh. I, think there, I think I learned that from... There's that one lady that does those comic... Um, YouTube videos, and we've talked about them before, and I, I'm totally blanking on all information other than that. <laughs> but she uh -huh. talked when they announced when they had the trailer came out for Ragnarok. Um, she sort of talked about all the influences and Thor Hulk or um, Planet Hulk and the Grandmaster and all that. Yeah, is it? Are, are you talking about the um, uh, Polygons like comic yeah. series? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I just recently watched their new video, um, part one about Watchmen. I'm really excited Ooh. for part two. Nice. Yeah. Um, but, God, like, what a fascinating... Yeah, because the, the character that he's sort of replacing in Planet Hulk, the Red Emperor, is the worst. He's just, like, <laughs> he's basically just your stereotypical, like, yeah. evil murderous dictator. Yeah. Like, he's got this cool exosuit that he goes out in and, like, kills people in the arena when he feels like it. Um, and Hulk manages to, like hurt him a little bit while he's in that suit that's like the first thing hulk does mm -hmm. and they're like whoa like the emperor is untouchable when he's in his suit like how did he do that um yeah and it kicks off this whole thing where they're like he you know it's like the emperor is fallible and this guy is better than him but they replaced him with jeff goldblum and that was a lot more enjoyable oh yeah <laughs> it was it was very very enjoyable stuff. I ah uh, I just loved like when they <laughs> when when the like rebels are uh like getting the ship to leave and they come across Loki just like still like <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and Korg, Korg's like, I'm Korg. I want to hop on this spaceship and fly out of here. You want to come? <laughs> I just... I really want to point out... I um, love that. Taika Waititi's um, influence. As far as I remember, yeah. I have not heard a New Zealand accent in a major motion picture like this. And there are at least two characters with New Zealand accents. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, like, if there's anyone, I mean, there's the Flight of the Concords dudes, and that's it. Yeah. Like, they are from New Zealand, and they're, like, the only famous New Zealanders. Well, and the famous I movie mean, that cause... they were in together, or the movies that they've been in, have been his movies. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, uh, Jemaine oh, Clement true. was in Moana. He was in Moana. And, well, uh, Taika Waititi and, wrote and, the script for Moana, the original, uh, the first draft. Yeah, <laughs> so fair enough. But, uh, yeah, there you go. New Zealanders, gotta stick together. Um, and then, but no, Jemaine Clement was also the bad guy in, um, Men in Black Oh, three, 3. yeah. That but was weird. I don't think he was even using a New Zealand accent in that. I think I, he was just sort of British. I can't remember, because that was a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was Boris the Animal, and I don't think he was having his own accent in that movie. Yeah. But, yeah, I I love New Zealand accents, and I gotta say, like, totally weird for Korg, but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's such a great, like, role for him to give himself that's not gonna, like, yeah. you know... He's peripheral. He's just, like, it's just fun. He's just, like, a cameo, well, sort of. Well, it's a better cameo than Stan Lee, I mean... Yeah, the Although <laughs> Stan Lee's this cameo in this one was very it good. It was very good. Yeah. Probably more lines than he's because had in a couple course, of years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. He had quite a few lines in. Um, I want to say it was the second Guardians of the Galaxy when they're whizzing past. Oh yeah. And he's just like telling his when story. he's talking, he's talking to the Watchers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's talking to Uatu and stuff, <laughs> which is so funny. No, like that. That that's the funniest as a sidebar. Stan Lee's cameo talking to Uatu because it do you know about the theory <laughs> I mean this is like 100% refuting it but um people have theorized in the past that Stan Lee is Uatu the watcher yeah. because he's there at, all the time watching everything and he's present for everything so like oh, maybe he's Uatu ha 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 and so they put in I think very deliberately that that stinger that bit where he's um yeah. talking to Uatu <laughs> and so it's like he's not Uatu <laughs> is... was that in was that in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 or was that in Doctor Strange oh I think it was in 2 because they were jumping through all the the warp oh was they were doing the time yeah. jump the, the yeah the warpy jumpy thing yeah that's that's when that was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, oh gosh, like, I don't even, I don't even have any criticisms of this movie, I don't think. My one, I, I don't have know. one, and it's, and it's <laughs> one, uh, that I have with a lot of movies, um, it's the romance. So. In, there, there was a romance? It's, it's, yeah, uh, Valkyrie and Thor. <laughs> I, see, I felt that. It wasn't, and I appreciated that. Well, they kissed at the end. Did I think they? they did. I don't think they I did. Think they when, did. when do you remember a kiss? At the end, I don't know. No, they don't kiss. Are you sure? There's no makey outies in this. I'm almost positive. Huh. Like, unless I, like, was looking the other okay, way. I'm gonna, like I, I, I remember either some sort of confirmation that they were, like, totally into each other. The only moment where things got a little tension-y that I remember was after they're kicking ass, like, when um, when Bruce is flying the ship, and they both, like, jump back up into the ship at the same moment and sort of come face-to-face, and it's like a whoa moment where they're, like, looking, like, they're just, like, right up against each other, and then it's over, and that's it. That's all that I remember. Maybe I was reading more into it then. But, I mean, there's also, in the, in the, in the headlines <laughs> recently, they cut a scene with her, um... That I guess confirmed her bisexuality, which is kind of rude that they cut it. Yeah. And also, I heard that the actress, she was upset they cut it because she liked the scene. I bet she did, because that's a great thing to confirm in a scene. (laughs) (laughs) I'd I'd say any scene that confirms queerness is is a good scene. I did did see uh, other people, probably just like Twitter posts 
talking about um, Thor's desire to be a Valkyrie. And, yeah. And how, like, that, <laughs> that was, was a very cute, cute. moment. Um, I think they were reading too uh-huh. much into it. Yeah, I think so too. I think that I think that it was just him doing that thing where guys are like, you know, it's super cool that women are doing stuff now, and <laughs> I'm kind of like, yeah. you know, doing that thing. He was putting his foot in his but mouth. Also, like, like sort of showing, I, I, yeah, I don't think there's uh, this movie really shows you what child Thor would have been like, just like so sweet <laughs> and genuine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> If uh, if a bit rowdy. Yes. Well, I mean, God of Thunder. <laughs> Sweet and rowdy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think probably people are reading a little more into that and think, than honestly, rightfully, is strictly necessary. Rightfully so, because we're so starved for a queer Marvel <laughs> character. We're dying Agreed. out here. We're dying out well, here. Well, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Deadpool. Deadpool's pansexual. He is, and Ryan Reynolds is fighting. Wants it. Fighting yeah, for he a wants it to come out. In the second <laughs> one. And if we don't get one for him, I'm going to be really upset because I'm just going to be upset. Yeah, they, we need some queerness in there, at least. At least some, like, real, like. Confirmed. Concrete. Talk Queerness. About, out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, he's got his lady, and that's fine. Good. Their romance is very sweet. But Deadpool's also into dudes and other things. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. I like that inclusion. Dudes and other things. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's strictly, you know, bisexual. No, so. no. I'm pretty sure he. I don't know. Like, basically. He's into it, the whole spectrum of things. Spectrum of genders and probably also <laughs> aliens and. Yeah, uh, yeah, beings of all kinds. Probably some not even sentient. Like, like rock. Who knows? He's Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, like Korg. Oh my goodness, that totally Maybe reminded Korg. me of a scene in Torchwood. Did you ever see? Did you ever... <laughs> yeah, that's that's the ridge. Yeah, the ridge. Like omni. Yeah, they call him omnisexual, yeah, right? Uh huh. And I think because he's like into other species yes, too. Because he travels the galaxy, and that's kind of what would happen. Yeah. Um, but there's a scene where yeah. he just sexy aliens. He just like they just find him again, or he just got resurrected, and um, Jack Harkness, the character. Um, yeah. To clarify, that's to who clarify, we're talking about. If it wasn't um, clear, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, he says something about like, uh, "Oh, isn't that gorgeous?" And they're like, "That's a poodle." <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you've uh, he's been he's been gone from Earth too yeah, long. Yeah, that was the joke because he had they had been out in the stars. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, oh, I have, I I've watched show. very little Torchwood. Oh my goodness! I, I, it's, I just I just watched very. Li- I don't know why. I just didn't. I, I just didn't. The Torchwood <sighs> just didn't uh, happen. But yeah, so I mean. So you say that that was your criticism, but I'm not convinced that it was real. I mean, like, if anything, like, Bruce and Thor were both just kind of, like, wowed by her. Because they yeah. were both really, they were they were both just, like, had a big crush on her. But I wouldn't say that there was, like, a, an actual confirmed romance see, in it. Because I, I thought that... I didn't see a crush between Thor, or between uh, Bruce and, and Valkyrie. I saw more of, like, uh, a but totally he said best friends. When, but no, 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 because because when I mean it was it was such a cute. We one. Just I, saw a by the way, we like saw two we, different movies. <laughs> we did, we did. Well, but that's that speaks to that's sort of a testament to it because there's just a lot to take away from it. It wasn't you know mm-hmm. first reading isn't necessarily it was um, the it's, entire I think thing. It's, I think it's what it was. Uh, but so what I okay. Speaking of which, Ruffalo, man, man, man. There's too much to talk about in this movie. We didn't even get around to talking about him and how much I loved his portrayal of Bruce Banner. I love Mark Ruffalo and I love him as Bruce Banner. But um, when they first run into her and like Bruce doesn't really remember her, but he kind of remembers her. He's like he's talking to Thor. And he's like, oh, she's so cool and beautiful and like what is those tattoos on her face Uh, like he's like rambling about her to thor (laughs) and he specifically says like she's like really he says like about her her being like awesome and like pretty and like like are those what are those tattoos is that the number of people she's killed (laughs) (laughs) 
it was just him like being totally out of his gourd because he's been a monster for two years. But like it, it, it's sort of unfiltered Bruce, and he said something about her being pretty, and I thought it was really cute. Um, yeah, I liked, I, I loved him in this. He was super funny. He was good. <laughs> The planet designed specifically to freak me out. <laughs> I loved all the freaking like Hulk parades. The Hulk parade. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun <laughs> with all the like green powder and yeah. I wish that they were that they called him the Green Scar. That's what they that's what his gladiator name is in uh, Planet Hulk. And I thought like that like why didn't they call him that? Like, they just called him the champion. It's yeah. like, not the green scar! It's a <laughs> rad name! Call him by it. Yeah, it, no. So, like, I'm not sure I have... It, you know, maybe if I were to go back, like, I, think, I could I find something. I think, honestly, it would take, something. take another viewing. Um, yeah. It was just so much to take in. It's, it's so much to take in. But it wasn't like... Okay, I'm totally gonna read DC. Um, it wasn't, like, <laughs> <laughs> overwhelming... <laughs> Like, there's a lot yeah. going on, but, like, DC, um, particularly my problem with Wonder Woman and also Batman vs. Superman and upcoming um, uh, Justice League, Justice it's just, League. just visual noise. It's just a lot. I mean, Wonder Woman was definitely better, but, yeah, there's just it's just a lot. Wonder Woman was good until the final battle. The final battle was just, like... Yeah, and then it just turned into all the other yeah. ones, which was a shame. Yeah, and that's... And and somehow, Marvel has avoided that, which I appreciate. Mostly, mostly yes. It got a little messy in Most. um, <laughs> in Doctor Strange. <laughs> oh, that I mean, okay. I will say, like, probably my favorite part of Doctor Strange is the visuals, oh, it's, though. It's, like, it's amazing, I mean, yeah, it's but crazy. There are part, parts but... where you're like, I my brain can't <laughs> can't understand this. See, I'm just thinking more like, you know, the big battle at the end of Age of Ultron. It's just like a bunch of robots and explosions. And yeah, I'm like, ah, yeah. I don't All even care anymore. Too. Yeah, Whereas just this movie robots was blowing colorful. up everywhere. Very colorful. It was beautiful. I loved the look of Sakaar. It was totally different than the comics, but I really loved it. I was like, ooh, Sakaar is like colorful garbage town. That's well, fun. Well, that's something they learned. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's something they learned from the success of Guardians. Is Guardians was so colorful. And people loved it. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Well, yeah, and the 80s thing, too. Like, it's just like, okay, yeah, bright is, colors, just lots Guardian, of quips. This is Guardians of the Galaxy 3. <laughs> it kind of is. It, but but better than Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Like, <laughs> oh, for sure. The humor <laughs> way was better. way better in this. It was so I, funny. I didn't, I, didn't like the, I didn't like the humor as much in the second Guardians. It just wasn't as snappy as the first one, for sure. Yeah. It just it didn't work as well, but... Dang, the comedy in this else? one was A+. Plus. Um, I don't know. Like, I, th- I think, I mean, probably, but <laughs> I would definitely said my piece about it. Like, A-plus movie, very, very oh, good. Lots of interesting more things. Oh, can about uh, Kate Blanchett? Let's just talk more about her. Yeah, let's just talk about her, generally. <laughs> I mean, Goddess of Death. Yeah. I mean, like, what better role? <laughs> it's interesting to me that in Marvel they've changed that goddess's name because in mythology she's just called Hell. Yeah, why add an A? <laughs> because they don't want to just say Hell all the time. I guess, I guess but like I, don't I know. mean, partially because it may just be confusing, you know, yeah, to have like true. a death god called Hell, and it's like, but it's unrelated to the Christian Hell, totally yeah. separate <laughs> thing. It's just a coincidental name. Uh, so I, I think it's mostly to avoid confusion. Also, you know, it sounds like profanity, and so they're just like. Let's yeah. just change it a little. I thought her wolf was a little weird. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a thing from mythology, though. I, that I, wolf it, doesn't belong to her in mythology. Yeah, it's Fenrir, right? Yeah, that's Fenrir. Uh, and Loki actually gave birth to that. So, fun fact. Hey, that's so, Loki's birth child. So, <laughs> she is using her adopted brother's, brother's baby... As yes. a battle mount. <laughs> yes. Yes. And let's not let's not um mix things up here. He gave birth to that wolf. <laughs> Personally and physically gave birth to it. <laughs> also Yarmangondra the world serpent. Wait, he gave birth to I'm pretty sure he gave birth to World Serpent. I know he gave birth to Slipnir the eight legged horse. He is just 
He had a lot of babies. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Loki did a lot of. Just lots of trouble and babies, monster babies. Yeah, I thought Fenrir was a, was a weird addition. Also, we just haven't done... He just didn't, he just didn't do anything. CGI wolves still don't look great. Yeah, I was getting some Twilight flashbacks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like, <laughs> I get that they're supposed to be big and scary, and that's, like, a, a something for Hulk to fight. But, like, I really didn't like that. Yeah, it was just kind of, he was just kind of dropped in there. I felt like he didn't really serve any purpose other than uh, something for Hulk to smash. Yeah. That was fun, but ultimately a little pointless. Oh, I loved at the end where Hulk tries to fight the big mob. He tries to fight this, like, <laughs> you moron! <laughs> but big monster! <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, smashing Hulk. And he's like, oh, fine. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was really good. <laughs> also, like, I, I, I both like and dislike the power that Hela has. Like, her just, like, unlimited swords. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Like, it's um, cool, yeah. oh, but it's, like, kind of not cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there, I mean, there are some, like, questionable things. Like, if you go back and think, you're like, that doesn't really make sense. Like, was her plan really just to send a skeleton army on the Bifrost? Like, just go and, like, send skeletons lots of places on well, the Bifrost? Because that thing seems her, limited in its capacity, plan, right? Her initial plan was... To have all of her people fall back in love with her and have them help her, but they didn't yeah, like but, her, so she killed them all. Yeah, but 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 so at the end, it's like we got to stop the skeleton army because they want to go on the Bifrost. Now Heimdall stole the sword, so she can't use the Bifrost. So that means her the, her plan hinges on using the Bifrost to like travel to different places. But that thing seems to have limited capacity, and those skeletons don't seem to be very tough. Well, like, they get, honestly, like, they get taken out hard the, by guns. The, <laughs> the scariest like, thing is... Like, they just go down. The scariest thing is, she's unstoppable. So if she got out... But then why does she even have those skeletons? Like, what are they even doing? <laughs> it just, it's a little bit of an iffy plan. It's like, you're really, like, that, that Bifrost has a really limited transportation capacity just based on, like area you know yeah. so like i'm not sure what she was gonna do there uh but it's fine it's fine i don't care that much but that that bit is a little um weird yeah because those skeletons aren't worth anything they're not worth anything no they're just henchmen. like they can just be taken out hardcore by just guns so they're not useful <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure how her plan was going to go if it, like, She's just like, happened. I'm going to suck up all the power from Asgard, look sickening, and then just kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Just kill everyone. Yeah. Just do that. That's what she does. <laughs> so, we are uh, mostly at time, but do you want to talk about Stranger Things 2 Let's just bit? give a, a, an, an overall how we thought, or what we thought and how we felt. Yes, let's, let's do that, because we both also finish watching Stranger Things 2, and we have to mention it. Okay, so I, l I thought it was better than the second season, or than the first season, in my opinion. Did you? And my reasoning for that is, I felt that the first season relied mostly on nostalgia of other movies and shows and music, and the second mm -hmm. season relied mm -hmm. more on its own merits. I don't know. I definitely saw some more of that, oh, like, it's still, nostalgia thing. it's still there, thing. for sure. But it, like, it has its own, you know, backstory now so mm -hmm. that it can build on itself rather than building off of whatever yeah. we imagine it could be. Yeah. I mean, and personally, I just don't count that against it in any way. Like, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's what that it's is, intended to do, and it's doing it very you're well. You're very right there. That is, that is a good point. Um, <laughs> I, I, my reasoning for not liking that is it feels really manipulative, but I'm sure... All media is manipulation, that's buddy. That's true. what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. I think I just need to, you know, we always, we, and, and this is what we, this podcast is about, is fighting against that sort of, um... Complacency. Yeah, well, and that, 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 um, something's popular, so we want to hate it. 
Sure, sure, sure. And I think that, yes, that that's too. what I'm fighting against with that first season. I think if I went back and watched it, I'd love it even more. Um, <laughs> but I out and out love season two. Although people do have a lot of issues with se- episode seven. Uh, yes, episode seven. Honestly, I don't have an issue with it. I think that the writing was of lower quality. I thought there was a lot of sort of... The dialogue was weird. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Like, especially, I gotta say, that scene when they're, like, trying to, like, remind Will how much they all love him and remind him who he is, like, nobody was talking like a person. Like, especially <laughs> not Mike. Like, Mike's speech about when they first met in kindergarten didn't read, like, anything that a 13-year-old boy would ever say. Like, he would not have said. And so it was just, it just didn't ring true to me yeah. the way that the first season did. Well, and, all, and, all of the time? And the, the, the stuff with uh, Eleven and, and... I don't remember her name, but she was eight. Uh, Kali. Kali. Um, I, I don't, this is a really cynical thought, but I'm wondering if maybe the creators felt a little uncomfortable writing a story that was mainly two women. But hmm. they also don't... I don't think they directed that episode, so... Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I don't, I mean, I don't take particular issue with that episode. I, I think they're I setting up I, some interesting I, I, ideas. I, I liked seeing more people that are her family. Um, mm-hmm. I, liked, I mean, and you're setting up an interesting idea. It's like, how many more of them are there? Yeah, and I liked seeing, like, both of those characters grow and also sort of, in a in a sad way, almost become uh, enemies. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a bit of a, like, um, X-Men thing going on. Yeah, it's it's um, chaotic good versus chaotic evil? Or neutral? No, she's, no, like, like, um, like lawful good versus chaotic good, I'd say. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> I think that's what you were trying to say. Yeah, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know that grid very well. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, yeah, um, I, I think it's setting up some interesting things. My my issues with that episode are the issues that I have with all of the episodes, which is just that the dialogue is a bit ham-fisted at times. Um, yeah. It just doesn't ring as true as the first season did. I really enjoyed this season, and I think they did some cool stuff. They um, definitely went out of their way to include more people of color, which was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was, that was much appreciated and, and I, and I took notice of it. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely, you know, I, I thought that, uh, they really went out of their way to, to redeem Steve further. They're like, boy, yeah, right. if you kind of were left with a bad taste in your mouth about Steve season one, don't even worry about it. There, he's like the best now. And also <laughs> there's this guy who is a thousand times worse than him. So okay. don't even okay. sweat it. Okay. Okay. So on the, on the topic of Billy, Billy. I, I am obsessed. Like... <laughs> That, he was the quintessential 80s bully. But he, so, um, I, I was talking to a coworker, and I think they were talking about how they just can't stand him. I'm like, don't worry, he'll make sense. He's not just a ball of Oh, yeah, no, no, he totally makes sense. I mean, I, I'd say he's a really thoughtful look at those typical 80s movie bullies that are, like, weirdly homicidal yeah. and just absolutely sociopathic. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, yeah, because, like... He's abused. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it, it totally works. And, it, you know, it breaks it down. And it's like, it looks at what that would really be like in real life yeah. to come up against a person like that. It's not just like, he's the worst. He's a big, mean bully. Oh, gosh. It's like, no, he's like, he's like messed up and everyone knows it. And it's not OK yeah. and he's that he's to, like he's that. He's trying to hide it. And boy, is he a charmer that. Oh, ew. that scene is like. So arousing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so messed up, though. Oh, completely. Um, completely. Yeah, it's, it's, oh boy, it just, it hurts. Like, just to see him be so manipulative and you're like, damn, like, Max, I'm so sorry that this is your life. Like, this guy, ah, uh, he's tr- just really troubling. And so it was great to for her to, like... 
get, you know, for him to get his comeuppance and for her to put him in his place. Like, that was really cathartic. We definitely have to talk about Billy's, the actor, I think his name's Dacker. Um, Yeah. He's so talented. Dacker Montgomery. He is so talented in in this role. Like, so. He looks like he's about, like, 36, (laughs) but yeah. (laughs) Um, He's not a 17-year-old boy in any way. He's scary, legitimately terrifying. Like he, yeah, he, he's, he's so believable. So be- he's so real. So af- he's the realest part oh, of this you're season. So afraid for everybody in his path. You're so afraid for him. Um, yeah. And like, this is coming off of his first major role, which which was the Red Power Ranger. Oh my God, he was. Yeah. In the new, in the new Power <laughs> I Rangers. didn't even and, know that. And, and it was a good. He was good at that, and I saw that, but. This is such a nuanced role. Yeah, it really did stand out because, I mean, like I was saying, you know, I felt like there was something a little bit false about season two, but he was really real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really, yeah, but sure. like in, in almost a heightened way, you know, it, it, I, I, I don't quite know how to describe it because it's like it, it was so true, but also sort of beyond real. Yeah, yes, it was very <laughs> like stereotypical, but also... It was definitely being like, played up for effect. Very, very true, but larger than life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, it worked super well, and then and so him with Max, like she was great. I really liked her. And I think he was good to have because Joyce is a little more grounded in this season, whereas she was the hyper real character before. Yeah. Well, because she's like she, she knows what's happening now. <laughs> and her son's there. He's just not having yeah, a good she's, time. Yeah, she's, like, worried all the time, but at least she's, like, on solid ground. Yeah. And Bob! <laughs> okay, Bob! so I... <laughs> so, when I, first, when I first started watching the first episode, I was like, Sean Astin, what? I thought it was... It's perfect, because he was a goonie! Okay, and it is perfect. And they're the goonies! But I was, I was so confused at first by his casting, <sighs> but by the, by, by the end, I was like... Bob, all the way, Team Bob. Bob forever. Well, and it's so funny how so many people were, like, suspicious of Bob because we don't trust nice so people. I was so worried he was going to be, like, spying on them from the inside for the scary <sighs> people. Yeah. Yeah. And he but might have been, he was but just we'll never good. know. <laughs> no, he was so good. He was the goodest, sweetest angel. <laughs> oh, Bob. Oh, Bob, you didn't you didn't deserve it, Bob. Oh, have you watched um, Beyond Stranger Things, the behind the scenes? No, not so, yet. Um, they talk a little bit about his last scene um, and how they're like, we're just going to keep <laughs> making it bigger and bigger and bigger because he needs the biggest exit. Oh, and it was. It hurt. <laughs> it was really... Pi- oh, no, Bob. He's like, they're just ripping him apart and he's... Oh, no, I would definitely Bob. watch watch that... That, at least that episode um, of Beyond Stranger Things because they also show how the like the, the logistics of that scene and who was actually attacking him. <laughs> how they filmed it. Yeah, let's, it was it was like a writing intern. <laughs> <laughs> just grab whoever's on set. And she was just like attacking him for hours and hours because that's how long it takes. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, that's funny. But I would recommend everybody watch those because they dedicate um, each episode of Beyond Stranger Things to like a um, a pairing. So like, there's the the Dustin and Steve episode. <laughs> um, there's the uh, the kid the, the friends episode. There's the adults. Yeah. Email. Eleven and Hopper. Also, it's, she's got a daddy now. It's it's hosted by the principal in community community. <laughs> Wow, that's weird. It's so good. And by the end, you're like, he, he's like, oh, because the Duffer brothers are there the whole time for every episode. Um, uh-huh. And you're like, and he's like, oh, I wonder if they're all going to high school next year. Can I be one of the new teachers? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> oh, man, they're going to high school. That means their science teacher is getting left behind. I know. I want. Oh, he's a great if, guy. If, uh, what I hope is that. He gets a really big role as like something happening outside of school with him in the next season, and so 
Yeah, like he gets mixed up in everything yeah, or something. Yeah, and he's not necessarily their teacher anymore. They might be trying to help him or find him or whatever. Yeah, that would be something. Because I like that Because that he's great. I thought he was very And their, nice you know, their relationship with him is just really nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, oh, that Bob. ending really warm. <laughs> yeah, <Bob. laughs> But the ending just really warmed my heart. It was nice to have just a good, happy 80s movie ending at the school dance. Like, that... <laughs> That was well earned. I really loved that everyone got their little moment of good happiness, you know? Yeah. A lot of people are With, you know are um a little upset about how that was filmed though. Um how it was filmed. So apparently um the actress who plays uh Max that was her mm-hmm. the, the the kiss the kisses for the, the the Yeah. The takes for that scene. Those were her first kisses. Mm-hmm. And oh, apparently yeah. she was a little pressured into that. Um, I mean, it sucks. Like, that's, I mean, that's kind of the, the how that, that's, it just goes with child yeah. actors. Like, I don't know what you do. And, like, yeah, I would have been fine without them kissing. I would have been fine with no kisses. Yeah. Although yeah, I, do I, want, been I fine. do want a Joyce and the Sheriff to kiss. I want them to kiss. You, you ship Hopper and Joyce? 100%. <laughs> only, only, yeah, only I, after you know, I ship Hopper and the diner guy from last season who died. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even remember his name. It's just the diner guy. Uh, you know, I mean, I get it. I totally get it. And I wouldn't be surprised if things go that way. But I kind of like them as just old friends, yeah, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, they were kids together, and now they're parents together, and they're just like, everything is crazy, and remember high school, let's have a cigarette. Like, <laughs> What I love is, like, she like, so hates his particular cigarettes. Yeah, he's got, because he's, yeah, she's like. Because she smokes too, but she's always like, ew, and I'm like, you smoke too. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think he, he smokes cigarettes that don't have filters, uh, I think that's yeah, the issue because she's like she was like spitting like she had some like tobacco in her mouth or something. Uh, I think he smokes filterless cigarettes, and that's the <laughs> that's the issue. Uh, what but a tiny I mean, issue to have. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a it's a good little bit of business, that's you know, true. just some a fun moment of like, you know, it it was like a break, you know, it was a little bit of a breath, a pause, yeah. like a. Well, and it's and it's a and it's a character trait that you know the the more particular. The more real. Yeah. But, so, yeah, like, I wouldn't be shocked if it turned into a romance between them, but I really love them as just dear friends. Just dear old friends who have been through hell together. Like, ah, yeah, them just reminiscing is very sweet. But but I I mean just to talk a little bit more about the the ending there. It, it, It was just so nice because season one ended so tragically. Yeah. That it was nice to just have, it was, you know, it was, it was like, and then bum, 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 oh no, actually the day hasn't been fully saved, but they all got their happy ending. You know, yeah. everyone, I mean, maybe not Steve, but he's okay. <laughs> you know, he's got a little <laughs> mentee now that he can, you know, have his little brother, but, you know, like, Nancy and Jonathan finally got together because, friggin' obviously... And, Barb you know, got justice. Uh, Barb got justice. And, you know, finally, like, Mike and Eleven get to just, like, be friends peace. and have some peace and, you know, have their little cutie pie thing going on. And, you know, it, it was nice. And, like, you know, there's hope that, like, people are going to stop teasing Will and he can just, like, be a kid and, like, yeah, it it was just so so. It was such a relief. Yeah. After everything, to have that well, great and, and little they, they, '80s movie ending. The Duffer Brothers also talk about that ending in the behind the scenes because they didn't want to have to continue something. Yeah, they 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 have the option of picking it up, but they don't have to. Well, they're for sure going to do another season because it's so uh-huh. popular and they have to. But like, they don't have to continue. Like, they don't have to. Jump right in, you know. They can oh, sort of let the yeah, story breathe a little time. bit. Yeah, uh-huh. because from season one to season two, it's like we have to fix some loose ends. Yeah, <laughs> I was really happy that they um, got back to Barb, and they really considered the repercussions of that. 
Well, they had to because we would have not given them. Yeah, we wouldn't have let that <laughs> slide. Um, but it is nice to see a, a science fiction series really take its repercussions seriously. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Also, mm-hmm. Barb got some justice in Riverdale, too. What? So the actress is in Riverdale, um, and in the first season, there was an episode centered around her. Um, that she There was some sort of gross sexual uh, harassment slash... Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly how to put it. It was like um, they the the football players were like sleeping with girls and then like keeping score in like a book. Yuck. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and they all all the girls knew, and then it was just like bad rumors about them. And anyway, the the actress who plays Barb, she has a different name in the show. I don't remember what it is. But they're <laughs> she's like, not Barb. She's not Barb. Um, they. Um, <laughs> All the cheerleaders and the main characters sort of team up to take these football players down. And the, the mean girl of the show, she's like, hashtag justice for, and then whatever her name is in the show. <laughs> little and wink. And I was like, that's so good. <laughs> that's a little audience wink there. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. But, yeah. No, Stranger Things 2 was great. I really liked it. I thought they did some cool stuff. And I cannot believe how long we have to wait for season three <laughs> i my, my last comment is you have to the main reason to watch behind the scenes or the beyond stranger things is so you can look at the duffer brothers because they are nice to look <laughs> yes i've heard <laughs> from I you think, <laughs> i think my tweet was like one of them has like a a, a streak of a sp- gray hair and i was just like smitten <laughs> yeah, I believe your phrasing was it drives you wild. <laughs> I mean, they're twins, but like one has a streak of right hair, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> it does it for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess last, last, last thing. Um, do we have anything we want to recommend this time? I do, and I should have sent it to you beforehand because I think it would be really helpful as like a, a resource, actually. Um, oh. so, so, you know, feminist, feminist frequency? Of course. Um, so they have a new episode of their freak show, which is a great title, um, <laughs> called "My Milkshake Duck Scares All the Women Away from uh, Women from the Yard." <laughs> and they define the term "milkshake duck." Um, which wow, is that's quite a term. So it's basically um, an actor whom you've loved their work, but then they've done something to sort of lose your faith. Which has been happening. Oh boy, isn't that something that's lately. really re- relevant these yeah, days? Yeah, well, and that's why they made this it's video. Like, it's just constant. Um, and so yeah. they they uh, they list three ways to deal with that in your personal life, like ways that you can sort of come to terms oh. at your at, at your own distance. So like you can, uh, and I don't know them off the top of my head, but there's like there's just so you can either deal we can. With it, uh, I'll link it. Yes. I'll and, link it in the show notes on YouTube. Yeah, and, and especially if you you're feeling grody lately as uh, most of us are. Yeah. Um either I mean we've got what? Kevin Spacey, we've got Louis CK, like I mean I've known about Louis CK for years, it, but it's finally it, coming out in a real yeah, way. It's a growing list, um which is good, but also very complicated. Yeah, it's really <laughs> sad. And sad. It's good and sad. So definitely I would if anybody's having issues with um, just coming to terms with all of it. Obviously, this isn't a like answer, but it's it gives you some options to sort of distance yourself as far away or as, or as not so far away as you need to be from the artists and their work. Uh huh. Well, yeah, that's uh, that seems like a good useful resource at the moment for sure. Well, and it also ties into our show. You know, we have to be critical of mm-hmm. the art itself and also of the creator. The- Definitely. Which, is, which, and that's an option that she gives is like, um, you can separate them or you can not if you don't want to, so. Well, good. Yeah, we'll link that because that sounds, that sounds like the kind of thing people need to have right now. <laughs> I, 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 it made me feel very good because I honestly have been not engaging with a lot of stuff happening because I don't know how exactly it's to feel. It's so much. And it's so much. Yeah, it's so much. Um, so this definitely helps clarify, like. Okay, I can feel this way, and it's not the end of the world. Yeah. What? It, what? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, something um, more pleasant 
Uh, my recommendation this time. Um, so, man, oh, man. Um, so have I mentioned the podcast Tannis before? I think I must have at Maybe. least name-dropped it. Um, oh, so it's... Um, what I actually am recommending is it's sort of sister podcast, The Black Tapes. Um, it's a good time. It's like a docudrama, um, you know, sort of f- like fictional documentary type thing. Um, very X-Files, very fun. Um, basically, this person, this woman is um, working, she's a journalist, she's working with this, um, like, this guy who debunks, like, paranormal Ooh. events and things. Um, you know, he's a skeptic, a professional skeptic, basically. And um, But he has this um, series of cases, which she's the main character, um, Alex, she starts referring to as the black tapes because he keeps them in these old VHS cases. Um, and it, basically it's the, the handful of things he hasn't been able to debunk yet um and so she was she's like basically starting out doing sort of a profile of him and what he does and she's like we should go through these like you and me let's work together and look at these black tapes and try to figure them out let's investigate them um and so it's really fun it's this really great sort of paranormal mystery docudrama podcast it's a good time it's a lot of fun it's just spooky good times. <laughs> <laughs> and I have recently blazed through the entire backlog, and now it's on a season break, and it's killing me. Oh. But this is a great time to hop in because you've got some time before the next season starts up. Yes, yeah, so you can catch up. Yeah, the, the most, I think the third season just ended. So um, hop in now, get ready. It's good times. But it, it actually, it's because Tannis is a similar sort of, like, paranormal mystery docudrama series. Um, and the characters in it are the same characters, Alex Regan and Nick Silver. Nick Silver is the protagonist of Tannis, um, and he's, like, the producer and friend on the Black Tapes. Oh, cool. And then um, Alex Regan is the producer and friend on Tannis. So, yeah, they're, like, this, they're, like, they're not real people, they're just characters, but they're, like, persistent people. Though it does get a little funky when you think about how these two are supposed to be actually occurring simultaneous to each other, because the fic, in the fiction, like, this is for real and these, this is happening in real time, but if these two things are happening concurrently, it raises a lot of questions about, like, (laughs) everything because things got pretty crazy in Tannis and it's just not like made reference to in the black tapes whatsoever and it's like big life changes for Nick and it's just like and Nick's here and we're talking about my stuff (laughs) so (laughs) it's a little weird and you just sort of have to separate them but both are great but I've been listening to black tapes and really digging it That is it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us, and like this video if you like us. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember... No No guilty guilty pleasures. pleasures.